Now we're specifically going to look at how integers are stored into memory in C++. So let's say we have a statement like int age equals 20 like this. So I'll explain what each part is doing here. So this int part basically allocates a section of memory to store an integer and it allocates four bytes. So we have four bytes to be storing our number. Then this age part, what it does is it gets associated or stored uh, with the address of that memory location so that whenever we use the variable name age, uh, we can find that address and retrieve the data. And by the way, um, in C++, if you do and age like this, this will actually give you the address of memory that age has been allocated to. Then when we have the equals 20 part, what this does is it stores the number 20 into the four bytes of data that we allocated with this int at the address location at age as a binary number. And if you convert a 20 into a binary number, it becomes something like this. So it's like a one, so it's two to the power of four, which is 16, plus uh, zero times two to the power of three, plus one times two to the power of two, which is four, so 16 plus four then 0 times 2 to the power of 1 and 0 times 2 to the power of 0. So we have this. So this number right here will get stored into those four bytes. And uh, if you want to see what that will look like, it will look something like this. So we have, since we have four bytes, we have 32 bits to store the data. And then we just have these ones here and then zeros everywhere else. And this is a binary representation of the number 20. So the, And this is what the four bytes of memory will look like. Then, if we were re going to read the integer in like this, so if we had something like um, std c out, and then we give it age, what this essentially does is it looks at the memory address that age has been assigned to. It reads in the binary value from this, so it'll read all of this in. And then it will convert that into an integer. So what it will do is it will say, okay, so we have uh, one, it, we have 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 4, that equals 20. And we'll get back our integer 20 as a decimal. So to demonstrate all of this, um, I'm just going to show you a program that we can do. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. So uh, what this program essentially does is, by the way, you can ignore this print bytes uh, function. All it does is basically prints out the contents of the memory in binary so we can have a look. But we assign an integer um, and we give it the value 20 called age. Then we'll print out its address. And remember, like I said, you can use the AND symbol to print out the address. You can s print the size of it using the size of operator that we looked at in the last video. And then we can print out the value that gets retrieved. And we can also use this print bytes function. Again, don't worry about this. It's something just I, I just made. And it basically just prints out the memory so we can have a look at that as well. So let's compile all of this and have a look. So we'll say a g plus plus um, dot slash demo dot cpp dash o dot slash demo like this. So this will compile our program. And let's try running the demo. And we can see that uh, we have the address right here. So this address is actually in hexadecimal, but uh, we can convert it. Um, I'll show you what the actual number is. So there's actually so many bytes in your memory. So a typical address, if we convert it, would look something like this. So at a memory byte number 140, blah, blah, blah. That's where our integer 20 gets stored. The size, as, as I said before, is four bytes because four bytes are allocated. And the value, once we retrieve it back, is 20. And here you can see the memory blocks that have actually been arranged here. And like I said, the value for 20, which is 10100, has been stored right here. Um, because we have all four of these bytes or four blocks available, we can store huge numbers. Like since we have 32 numbers, we can have we can store 2 to the power of 32 different numbers. So we have a large amount of numbers that we can store. But this is essentially 20 in binary. And we had these four bytes are used to store the integer. And in the last um, byte, as you can see here, we have our number 20 stored in here. Let's try storing a larger number. So if I put something like this, and then I run this again, uh, we can see that the, oops, I need to compile it. 
And then if I run this again, we can see that we have a different binary number stored here. And um, just to confirm that it is being stored in binary, um, what we can do here is we can convert from decimal to binary, put this number in, and we can see that, yeah, this this one starting with 11011, um, that is what comes up here, so 11011. And you can see that we're actually using up three of our bytes now. So the larger the numbers we use, the more of these bytes we'll take. But again, the integer will get allocated four bytes of storage. So yeah, that is basically how integers are stored and read from memory in C++.